that is 10.2.1, which is basically word problems and solving triangles. And we should be in the other pen. So this is word problems and solving triangles. And we're going to be using Sokotoa. So by now you should have this memorized. And when we draw triangles, they won't always be lined up perfectly on the x, y axis. So sometimes they'll be askew. And we'll need to think, well, there's theta. So we got opposite. Adjacent and hypotenuse. Now if the angle moves, so we could have the same triangle, but if we talk about the angle up here being theta, then our hypotenuse is always opposite, well, opposite dangerous word, but it's across from the right angle. That doesn't change, but now adjacent and opposite are going to change where they are because we're thinking about a different angle now. So we're going to solve a triangle first. When we solve the triangle, we're going to find all sides and all angles. And the triangle we're going to solve of course, we're going to be doing right triangles. We go six, three, and there's going to be two angles. So we want a theta, and we'll call the other angle phi. All right. So how do we get? Let's go for the sides first because it has that nice Pythagorean. Sorry about that. It's my dog. And we go Pythagorean theorem, so we don't have the, depending on which one you think, let's just call that y, so I don't have to say if it's opposite or adjacent, but we have three squared plus y squared equals six squared, so y squared equals six squared is 36 minus nine is something, 27. 27 says y squared. These problems, we're generally going to go with the positive. We're going to be doing uh, side measurements and word problems, so we're usually going to be going with the positive measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and just go with plus square root 27. Now, how do I get angles here? If we want to avoid the ugly angle, square root 27, and if you're a numbers geek, this is 3 square root 3, hopefully. And... Let's see, if I take my original six and three and I want to relate theta, I have adjacent and hypotenuse. So we have adjacent and hypotenuse use cosine function. So we have cos theta equals adjacent three over hypotenuse six, reducing to one half. Now, what is theta? If I use inverse trig functions, it's cos inverse of one half. And where's that? One half's an x value, and I want the point right here. So we get pi over three. So there's our theta, theta's pi over three. Now to get phi, there's a few ways to get phi. If I use the nice six and three right here, I can write sine phi. So we're using this angle up here. And we're going to use sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. It's the same size, but as far as phi is concerned, phi is the upper angle here. So opposite is 3, and hypotenuse is 6. 
course reduces to one half, but this time we're using the sine function, which of course is a y value in our unit circle. So our y value is now one half. And we're gonna pick this angle right here. And that of course is pi over six. There was another way I could have gotten phi theta plus phi plus the right angle equals pi. And I'm just going to use this to check, but I could just as well use this to solve for phi or theta. So I have pi over three plus pi over six plus pi over two, better equal pi or we're in trouble. Fractions suck unless we go common denominator. So we got two pi over six plus one pi over six plus three pi over six does equal six pi over six. So again, I could have avoided this computation down here by using the angle I knew and the pi over two and then using angle sum. So this is solving a triangle. We got both angles and we have all three sides. So this triangle is solved. Uh, if I label everything, pi over three, that th phi right there is pi over six and we got all three sides labeled right there. All right, now we're gonna do a word problem. So we have a rain gutter. It's a good season to make sure your rain gutters work. A rain gutter is constructed uh, by bending an aluminum sheet. Bending a 12 inch, looks like an M. Twelve inch wide aluminum sheet and num sheet uh, with an angle. We'll call it angle theta. where the sides are four inches long. And we can draw a figure of this. So rain gutter is gonna be shaped like that. Those lines should be straight. Unless your gutter is really old and it's been through a lot, but we got four, four, and four. Now, how do we wanna measure our angle? I think a zero degree angle should mean no bend, in which case we would measure the angle this way right here. So I'm gonna call that angle theta. Now my four looks like it's in the wrong spot. It might seem natural to measure the angle this way right here, but then you would have to say that no bend would be an angle of 180 degrees or pi. So this way, the way I labeled it seems a little more natural. And I want to know, so we have, so we got our angle theta. I wanna know the height right here. We'll call that H for height. And the other thing I want to know is the total. Now this is a, we're looking at a cross section. Obviously a gutter is very long. So we're looking at just a cross section. We got H, same thing, theta right here. So I wanna know H, represent H in terms of four and theta. So in terms of, or as a function of theta. 
All right, how does h relate to theta? Well, theta is sort of measured in the wrong spot. There are two ways we can make it measured in the right spot. And I'll switch to blue. So we'll do some really quick constructions here. I could complete the right triangle. That's my right angle. And then I measure h as that height right there. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is I could relabel re that angle as theta up there using some alternating angles of parallel lines, some geometry, uh, why those would be equal. And either way we go, let's go with the first one that I drew. So I wanna know H, uh, I know theta, so theta is some angle we'll choose, and then I wanna figure out what is H. So I wanna relate theta to hypotenuse and opposite. So we got sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And it's a little strange, opposite is actually H here. So opposite is H and hypotenuse is four. So we got sine theta equals h over four. So I'm gonna express h in terms of just theta. So get the four out, so we're multiplying by four. So h is four times sine theta. So that's the answer to, we've expressed h in terms of just theta here. All right, next up, I want to express the area as a function of theta. So area is a function of theta. So what do we need for the area? So we want to, you know, I could shade in the whole area, but that's not terribly helpful. We want to get that whole area right there. So there's three basic shapes. There is two triangles, a triangle on the right, a triangle on the left, and then there's a bigger rectangle. Rectangle is easy. Rectangle is width times height. And We'll break this down and we'll rewrite this here. So the rectangle with four height h. Now I have our two triangles. I'll draw them sort of spaced out right here. It's a little bit taller than it should be. And we still got h for the heights. Now um, we're gonna use four sine theta when we, when we actually compute this. Now another measurement I need in the triangle, I got a height, but what I also need is a, we'll call it a width, maybe a base, and that'll be good, B and B, that should be the same number right there. So how do we get B, the base of this triangle? So we'll go back to our original, we'll label that B right there, and we wanna relate four, theta and B, B is now the adjacent. So adjacent hypotenuse, that is a cosine function. So cos theta equals so cos theta equals our hypotenuse was four and our adjacent was b. So again just multiply by four. Four cos theta equals b. My theta started looking like a b right there, but uh, we know what we're doing. This is cos theta. So 4 cos theta equals b. All right, so that's our um, width or our base. Now area will be length times width. This is for a rectangle. Now one thing we can do, if I take this triangle, this triangle on the right, and think about moving it over and placing it here, I could add up the area of two triangles, or I could just say that they together form a rectangle. So we got the first length times width and the second length times the second width. So this will be, let's see, and we have the same, uh, the same height on both of these. So we'll go 
sometimes it's fun to draw out things that we're finding in math so it's a little more obvious what we're doing. So we got the first area will be the two areas of the triangle stacked up and the second area is going to be the rectangle. All right, two triangles. They are a B times H plus now we have four times H. So what was B? B is four cos theta. And H is four sine theta plus four times H is another four sine theta. Now you could leave it like this looks pretty easy to factor out the uh, four squared. I also could factor out a sine theta if I want to. And what I'm left with is cos theta plus one. So either form is uh, correct. Either way, we got area expressed as a function just of theta right here. So we'll go with the second one. Looks a little bit cleaner. The first one may be a little more intuitive. So if we wanted to maximize the area, that unfortunately we can't really do until calc calculus one class, um, we would maximize this, but we could, at right now, we could graph this. If you wanted to graph it, you'd write it as just a function of x, so replace your thetas by x's. Now, this graph is gonna be a product of two functions, and so that's gonna be a little bit hard to uh, graph without uh, graphing utility. So you can certainly plug it into a graphing utility and graph it out and look at where the maximum appears to be. Another thing you can do using more intuition is if you think, well, if theta is zero, your gutter looks like this and has basically zero volume. If theta is 90 degrees, I, I don't think you would ever bend, want to bend it past 90 degrees because it should be obvious you'd be making it smaller at that point without a doubt. Uh, you could get this shape. Uh, so the maximum is going to be somewhere in between. The further out I bend these sides, I lose a little height, but I gain a little extra area in this part. So it could make up for the lack of height. So we're not going to go into how to uh, maximize this as a calculus question. So next, we're going to solve another triangle. So we're beginning with different information. So in this triangle, we have an angle. Well, we really have two angles. We always get that right angle in a right triangle, but we get one angle is 30 degrees. And how do we get our other angle? So we're in degrees, let's keep it in degrees. So we have 30 degrees plus theta degrees plus right is 90 degrees is 180. So we get 180 minus 120 is 60 degrees. So I chose these numbers to be nice so we wouldn't be spending forever trying to subtract and get 19 degrees. And then of course we won't, don't really know cosine or sine of 19 degrees. So I kept the angles relatively easy here. Now I do need to solve for A and C. I could write it is true that tangent theta equals, I don't know, this will work. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and theta 60. We do know tangent 60. And what is that? I think square root three, 
let's see, six degrees is right up there. Y is bigger than X, so it should be square root three. It comes from square root three over two over a half, which will reduce to just square root three. V equals two over A, multiply by A, divide by square root three. So A is two over square root three. And last up, we're gonna get C. So I can do something very similar for C. If I stick with theta, I wanna get C. Let's go opposite hypotenuse, which is sine. So sine theta opposite to hypotenuse is C. And theta is still 60 degrees, not 30 degrees. So sine 60 is square root three over two is two over C. So multiply by two and by C. So we get four equals square root three C. C equals four over square root three. So from here, we are solved. One thing I did not use was Pythagorean theorem. We can now use, we use the angle sum already to get our other angle. I could use Pythagorean theorem now to check. So we should get four over square root three squared plus, oops, equals, that was hypotenuse, so square that, that equals two squared plus two over square root three squared, four plus two squared is four over square root three squared, and over here we have 16 over three, so this only sucks because we have non-common denominator. So if we fix that problem, divide by three, we get 12 thirds plus four thirds. I also could have multiplied by three and gotten out of fraction land, but either way, this works out. Now we're gonna do another word problem and we're gonna find the width of a river. So a surveyor can measure the width of a river. by setting up a transit at point A. Directly across the river from point B. She walks 300 meters to point C. And this point C is perpendicular to the line containing A and B.
So we make some assumptions that, well, the river doesn't actually have to be straight because she can walk 300, as long as she walks perpendicular to line AB, the river does not actually have to be straight. So we can draw a slightly curved river or a very curved river. And we have, now, of course we know rivers are not the same width uh, every place on the river, obviously. So that part of the problem is not exactly correct or accurate. So we wanna measure here's A and B directly across the river. Now she walks 300 meters to point C. And going there, she walks perpendicular to AB. So she could walk this direction, but that would involve walking on water or swimming. So let's go this way right here. All right, perpendicular or 90 degrees or pi over two. And this is point C right here. Okay. Oh, we need more information. Uh, the angle measures the angle. Now the angle, I'm just gonna write at C to be 30 degrees. Uh, if you wanna be very specific, you could write instead of angle C, it goes, you could write it as ACB or uh, BCA, but I think that's, you don't need to get that specific here. We know we're gonna talk about the angle at C connecting back to A. All right, so these transits are some fancy machines that can measure angles and distances very precisely. So you can be sure that that's 300 meters, accurate to probably less than, I don't know, I don't wanna make something up, but fairly accurate. Certainly accurate to within the meter. So how do we, and we get 30 degrees. So how do we get the width of the river? That's of course AB right here. If I give it a name, we'll give it Y. I wanna relate y, 300, and 30 degrees. So I have a opposite, with respect to 30 degrees, the angle we have opposite and adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, that comes from the TOA. Tangent 30 degrees is one over square root three, equals y over 300, and multiply by 300, And that is the width of the river. And this is in meters. So of course, rivers aren't the same width, but at that particular uh, two points she measured, those points would be that far apart. So we're now gonna do one more problem. And this one is a statue on a building. If uh, I'm scrolling through the notes too quickly, you can always access the Excel file, or not the Excel file, the OneNote file separately so you can scroll up and down freely. You don't have to look at what I'm looking at. Now I know it's probably too late to help you today, but you can always look back at the notes um, afterwards to compare your notes and make sure they're they turn out to be the same, or at least include everything I write down. All right, last example, statue on a building. You are standing 50 feet away from a building. Oh, we have to say how tall. All right, we generally choose five or six feet because they're easy. So we'll go, we'll go short today, five feet tall, or five feet tall.
looking at the top of the building. You have to look up 45 degrees. Uh, on top of the building is a statue. And looking at the top of the statue, you have to look up 60 degrees. All right, and the statue's on the front, uh, the front part of the building. So I want to know how tall is the building, how tall is the statue. All right, so we had a 45 degree uh, angle to look up to the building, so it's, you can already think equilateral right there. So let's draw a nice picture. So here's the ground. Uh, buildings, we're assuming, are built straight up. So it looks like that. Now if you're looking 45 degrees to look at the top of the building, it's going to look about like that right there. And that is 45 degrees. You are 50 feet away. And there's a statue on top of the building. And when you look at the top of the statue, uh, that angle is 60 degrees. Uh, there is one thing I left out in this drawing, is that uh, this would be if your eyeballs were at ground level. So you are five feet tall, so there's an extra five feet right under here that I completely ignored. So this height right here is five. So we know the equilateral triangle, the 45 degree equilateral triangle on the inside, without doing any real trigonometry, I can go ahead and say uh, that's 45, so we get another 45. So our two sides are both 50, they're 50 and 50. I don't actually need the hypotenuse here to answer uh, this first question, how tall is the building? So the building is almost 50 feet tall, except we have an extra five feet right down here. So there's an extra five feet because you start uh, well, I, should, I said that you are five feet tall, your eyes are five feet off the ground. So total, you have 55. So how tall is the building? 55 feet. Now we need to figure out the statue. I could consider this triangle, but there's a major problem with this triangle. It does have three sides, it does have angles, uh, but the problem is it has no right angle. So this is not a right triangle. So everything we've done so far is right triangle trigonometry. So the next sections we're gonna do are non-right triangle uh, trigonometry, but for now we can solve this problem without breaking out uh, non-right triangle trigonometry. So we're gonna do instead is forget that one. Let's go with the 60 degree. Our bottom side is 50. And now we're gonna get the full height. So we're gonna to measure top of the statue down to eye level right there. 
and we'll call that Y, and we're going to use tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so Y over 50, and multiply by 50, and tangent 60 is square root 3, and this is Y. So our y is 50 square root 3. So I want to know what the difference is. So we're going to take the big number minus 50. So our difference is big minus small. 50 square root 3 minus 50. There's really not much you can do. If you want to get fancy and factor, you could, but it's not very much more enlightening. So this is the uh, statue height. And of course it's in feet. So why was I allowed to not care about the fact that we started five feet off the ground? Let's think about this diagram here. So I didn't care about starting five feet off the ground because I really only used everything at eye level. So I did all my computations not from the ground but from eye level. So at eye level the building is 50 feet tall. It is 55 total but at eye level it's 50 and then I used eye level to the top of the statue is 50 square root 3. So I didn't have to worry about the extra five hanging around. So that was 50 square root 3 minus 50 feet. And those are our final answers there. So if I forget to give you your quiz tomorrow, your quiz will be Friday and it'll have word problems on it, but most likely I'll remember to write your quiz for tomorrow, so it'll be, uh, it won't have word problems on it.